convinced that the reason why this is taking so long is because I didn't actually do anything in order. Like I didn't have any plan coming into this. I mean, to be honest, let's let's just be fair here though. This was in pretty rough condition, much rougher than I typically would take on. But you know, I let the beauty of this piece take my better judgment and I shouldn't have bought it. I should never have bought it. That being said, okay. So I'm working on this drawer here and I have taped it off. My plan is, is to just tape it off and paint and I'm not going to worry about the veneer problems on the edges because I tried filling them in with Bondo but the veneer is so thin that when I sanded it down, it just dissipated. So what probably should have happened was I should have just ripped all of the veneer off of this piece. But then at the same time, much of it would have been destroyed doing that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I have um, this paint that I am going to use. It is a very dark gray iron ore. So that's what I'm gonna paint around the edges. And this is what I plan to do with the whole piece is try to maintain as much of the veneer, the good veneer as I can, and then paint the rest of it to try to cover it up. And typically I would turn this into chalk paint, but I'm not even going to bother with that at this point. I'm just going to put it on. sure what I'm gonna have to do with this I'm gonna have to fix the other one first but I have a feeling that this entire door is gonna have to be painted or yeah door I'm gonna try to mirror image the doors and I'm gonna do an inch and a half outline on the top here because of the fact that I have so much veneer damage over on the edges so that's my plan. Looking really good so far. I'm liking how the lines are matching. I needed to see how things were going to come apart, come together. I'm imagining I'm probably going to paint the rest of the frame, but before I do any of that stuff, I'm going to have to vacuum because there is still sawdust all over the frame. And then so far, I'm really loving it. I'm hoping that I'm keeping the the feeling of the piece without making it too modern because I really didn't want to modernize it, but I couldn't really help painting some of it, but I want to keep some of it intact. So it's a balancing act. 
So I'm going to get a vacuum and I'm going to clean it out thoroughly and then we will move on to painting the rest of the frame. So I'm excited. I'm ready to get this thing finished. I just have to fix, I'm still fixing this part of the door, this door over here. This one is heavily falling apart and I need to bondo this and then sand it. But then other than that, I'm also gonna paint the other one. So I think what I was going to keep intact as far as wood grain is taken care of and the rest is just gonna be painted. So I'm excited about that. Let's go ahead and get a vacuum. Right, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back in with a second coat on the body. I'm not too concerned about the top because I'm gonna do several coats of polycrylic on the top and I actually want to do a little bit of light distressing because I don't want it to look like a brand new piece. I want it to look older and aged and like it's been you know around the block a couple times. So all right let's let this dry and then I'm gonna come back. A slight change of plans. I actually decided I don't want to do a second coat of paint. Might be impatience or it might just be because I really am liking the look of when I'm distressing it and I can see the wood through it. So I'm just taking a 120 grit sandpaper and lightly going over it like this. So I'm only distressing the wood, the painted part. I am not distressing the state part. And it's just lightly you really hate to get to the to the end of a project and then be like, I really don't like that. Um, so I'm very happy to be loving the direction that this is going in. And I think that it's, I think that I kept true to the style of it. And especially with the added, the heavy distressing that I did, I feel like it feels old. So I'm happy with that. I think that I made it, I don't know. Now I'm just waxing poetic about it. Anyway, I'm going to let this all dry and then we're gonna start on the top coat. And I still have to fix this one door off to the side and then distress this door. But I'm gonna actually save that for the very end because I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I, um, I need to do some heavy work on that door, uh, gluing and clamping and bondo. So that'll be the very last bit that I do, I feel. Everything else is probably gonna be installed and finished on this before I get to that, which it's whatever. is the pretty drawer.
So I went through the hardware last night and this is the original hardware, but there are not enough of them intact to do the entire piece that way. So I'm having to use four small knobs and I'm hoping that these will fit in enough with it. They have a very similar look to them, but because they're more of a bronze look, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of rub and buff on them and see if I can make them a little bit more gold. And hopefully that will make them just kind of fit right in. to the very last task of filling in the ugliness with Bondo. But it is not wobbly anymore. And I have glued what I can of the veneer. So I'm hoping that with a good sanding and with some Bondo, it will look beautiful and you'll never know that it looked this terrible. Here's hoping. My makeshift table, my cast iron base which coincidentally is a project that will be coming up. And I'm just going to ugly Bondo in all the cracks. It looks god awful, but don't worry. It won't look this bad once I sand it. And if it does, I can rebondo and try again. Because I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of a an icky process, which is why I don't love this part. But what I do love is the fact that this is going to look beautiful and smooth once it's all sanded down. So you won't be able to tell how ugly this was because it's gonna fill in all those ugly cracks. So now I just need to let it dry, cure thoroughly. Hopefully that will be quick and then I'm gonna sand it down, paint it, distress it, give it two coats of poly acrylic, and then install it. So I'm excited. New day, I have let it sit and it is rock hard. So now I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to sand it. Of course it's cold outside now, so <laughs> that's all right. Let's just see what it turns out. I finished the sanding. This is what it looks like. So it is all sanded down smooth. There's a couple of pockets. I cleaned it off and there's a couple of pockets of veneer that are popping up, but I honestly think once it all dries off and I'm able to paint it and distress it, you won't notice it anyway. So I'm gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna wait until it completely dries and then give it a nice coat of paint and then move on with my life. completely 
done. I could not be happier with it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I could not have dreamed of this being any more perfect than what it is. It's just one of the most unique and beautifully designed pieces of furniture I have ever seen. Personally, I've never seen anything like this before with the hidden drawers on the sides and these rounded off doors. I love it. It's like hidden storage. It was a beast. I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot to tackle, and, but I feel like if I'd have had a workshop or a garage to do it in, I could have done it really quickly. But the fact that it's so heavy and big and clunky and it took up like all of my tiny little working space over there made it go a little bit longer than I would have hoped. A lot longer than I would have hoped. But I am so happy that it's done and I, I think it's so beautiful. I mean, you can't see the full beauty of it because of how much light is coming through into my living room. But honestly, there's not a better place for me to put it at the moment. So when, when I get to my living room, you'll be able to see it much clearer because there's no way I'm selling this thing. My husband asked me if I was gonna sell it or if I was gonna keep it. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I just spent like months redoing this piece. So I'm gonna live with it for a while and I'm gonna love it and I'm gonna enjoy it in my living room. But I did have to tell him that obviously some of the things in this living room are gonna have to be elevated to this standard because this is an absolutely gorgeous piece. It looks like a designer piece, if I do say so myself. So I'm gonna be redoing my cabinets because they're just a little bit too farmhouse now that I've got this gorgeous thing. I have plans to redo my beautiful, I don't even, coffee table. There's the word I'm looking for. So I've got two cabinets that need to be completely redone. I think I'm gonna add legs and completely paint them again. And my coffee table needs to be redone now. <laughs> I'm also planning to do a small makeover in my entry. It's a very tiny little entryway, but it needs a complete overhaul. So that's gonna be coming up. Let me know what would you, what would you like to see first? Do you wanna see the entryway first? Or would you like to see me kind of elevate the pieces of living room furniture that I have that need that need help now that this beautiful thing is living here and they just look really shabby in comparison to it. So I was also considering, I have had a couple of friends tell me that they want me to talk about the do's and the don'ts basically of buying used furniture. Like what things I look for, what things I avoid, all of the details on how to use refinishing furniture to, re to furnish your own home on a very small budget. Refinishing furniture is one of the main ways that I use to be able to create a beautiful home, my dream home basically, on a very tiny budget. So if you are interested in a video like that, sure to let me know. I'm actually thinking of doing that as the next video. So you may see it before you even really vote on it it might be here on Monday. So that being said, thank you so much guys for watching all the way through if you've made it this far. I am so thankful for all of you here um, supporting my channel and you can support it even more if you like the channel and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this kind of content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.